Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. When we are smiling like this, is because there's a fine boy in the studio. <laughs> All right, so we have a guest, and he's a media extra, a media persona extraordinaire, an actor, a TV presenter, and an all-round entertainment mogul. Join us as we speak with Il Rhymes with us here in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you. You just made me really shy, man. <laughs> the mogul. That was that was like, the plan. Oh. I, I'm glad that it worked. How yeah, are you? I'm just a regular TV presenter, man. Hi, oh, really? Yeah. You don't look like that. Or an event. Ah, Esther is already shooting shots. The year is not yet over. Okay, guys. So we had a conversation at the start of the show where Banky yeah. W, we announced that Banky W had declared yeah. his intention to run for office in 2019. And yes. we're starting to see a lot of entertainers deciding to go for politics. What's your take on that? And do you ever plan to run for politics? Well, well I think if you have a voice, um, you have a responsibility to the people who support you and have impacted your career in one way or the other. So if Banky, you have to commend him. If he's going to take that bold step and say, I want to be a mouthpiece spokesperson for the people and you know pursue their benefits, their gains, I think go out, support him. And um, let's see where it goes. Um, we're a generation of ranter so we're ranting on social media we're nagging we're complaining but nobody wants to you know take the bull by the horns everybody's waiting for somebody else um, to take the first step he's taking the first step what do the people need to do go out vote for him show your impact he's an independent the MDP is an independent party they're not the movers and shakers but who really are the movers and shakers the people so put all the money aside the affluence aside the big political bigwigs. If the young people decide we want to take Nigeria in our own hands, we should get up and just vote. All right. So there's a part B to this yeah. question as well. Do you ever plan to run for office? Uh, I don't think it's my thing, you know. I, I can't say no. I'm very, um, which is why I don't speak a lot in public, because I'm very passionate about stuff that I like, um, especially the youth. So, like, my whole career has been centered around promoting youth and, and working on projects that actually directly impact young people and create a platform whereby, you know, we have international standard productions or works done by young people and projecting, you know, the image of Nigeria is actually a global player. And what are some of these works that you have done? Um, little stuff. Um, if, we, if we go back to days of even being on Sound City, you know, connecting with the, that's when, you know, the music industry was almost non-existent. You know, we were working really hard, going, doing shows, you know, being part of the first ever um, album launch that was done in there, or going around the country on Nigerian Idol, which I did for about five years. Um, that is changing people's lives. You know, you, you see somebody, location one, who probably just struggled to get transport money to come to the audition. They end up winning a car. They have a, you know, over 10, 20 million hour contract. And then the next day, they're big superstars. You know, it's just the opportunity. I, I like to engaging things that give the everyday man the opportunity to be better. To I, can, I can testify to that as well, because I remember Nigerian Idol season four, Wina Evel. Yes. Yes. Recently, she did a song, Kilimanjaro. The song not only won an award at the AMVCAs, she yes. just did the video as well. So yes. you're creating an avenue for people to shine. Or you're being part of the process yes. that creates avenues for young people to discover their talents yes. and shine. Just like they asked the chicken and the egg, who came first <laughs> question, I'm going to ask you. Which came first? You're a TV presenter, an event host, you've, you're a, an on-air personality. So which one Which one of all these many things you did came first? And then what was the process hmm. for you like? I, I think what really came first is, was the writing. So I used to be a writer. So I used to be an editor. So the, the, my first um, major interaction with celebrities, in quote, was when I used to do a magazine. Like a, It was the first online magazine. This is throwing it back to about 2004. About, yes, about 2004. Um, so that's it. So, you know, back in the day, it was called an e-zine. We didn't have um, a lot of blogs, ETC. I think the, probably the only blog was like um, Naraland. Yeah, and oh, that's what yeah. like back in the day, you know, Nireland text, yeah, where well, yeah. you have to look at, yeah, no pictures, nothing. Um, so seeing the industry evolve from then has just been super amazing. So I started off as a writer, um, ended up doing one TV show randomly because I was um, actually going there to buy like mobile rights. I used to work for a company called Mtech, So they were into value added service. Um, so ringtones and things like that. So I had a conversation um, with a guy called um, Shegun. So he was a producer, you know, big shout out to him. He's the reason why I'm legit, why I legit became a TV presenter. Cause I was just like, he was like, yeah, Illy, but you should just host this show for us, man. We have a show called Knock Your First Chance. You, sh you should host it. Like 
I like the energy that you have. I'm like, dude, I'm a writer, man. I, I'm comfortable. Just sell me the rights to this, you know, to this content. Let me make your, your stars famous. You know, we're going to have it on people's mobile phones. Back in the day, you know, we had just like polyphonic ringtones and like having a wallpaper was a big deal. A theme yeah, yeah. was also a big <laughs> deal. So you had to pay for those. So we're just trying to get secure those rights. So um, I ended up doing that show and the rest is history. Fast forward from there, I was Nigeezy, Sound City, Nigerian Idol. Um, the G-Bam show was my first like big boy TV show. Ooh. <laughs> then, you know, the Nigerian Idol and then, you know, um, Start just in Africa Magic, then BET A list. Like life, just you know, sometimes you stumble onto onto your calling. So, do you still crazy. do writing? Um, yes. So, um, I do something on my Instagram called Selfie News, um, which is kind of hilarious. So, and they're gonna ask me why. What, what is Selfie News? Of course, we're uh, gonna ask. <laughs> so, pretty much because you know, I'm I'm kind of in the middle. There's the old school. There's the new school. I'm kind of a bit of the, you know. I'm still, I'm still a young guy. You get me. So I, I, I think I'm still, you know, part of the culture, you know, I'm there in the background. Um, so we, we stumbled upon the era of social media where, you know, you need to have Instagram followers and likes and things. And I'm like, oh, I'm not really that guy because I'm legit actually busy working. So I don't have time for all of these, you know, pose and take 50 pictures. So I said, how do I populate this, my social media page with content that stays true to me? So I'm a media guy. So the news would always interest me. But I also think I have a humorous streak. So I just said, voila, I'm going to do something called selfie news, where I take all the news for the day, and I make a parody out of it. So I'm giving you the information, but I make it funny as well, because we all need to laugh. You know, We all have a very stressful life. So that's how selfie news came about. And it's doing really well, to be honest. I, I'm so, definitely yeah. going to check it out after this interview. Check it out. Let's talk about the, the lifespan of entertainment people we find that in the industry the lifespan isn't as long yes. as it is in other careers so in other careers you're climbing the ladder yes. you're getting to different positions well it does seem that after a while in the entertainment industry not for everybody for but for a lot of people there are people that we look at and say why well, used to hear, hear him sing when i was a little child yeah. why well, used to watch him on tv and he's just in one place now maybe working in an oil company or mm -hmm. just doing something low-key have you ever nursed such yeah. worries as to lifespan of your career in the social media space and how do you deal with this if yes okay so, so to tackle that is is basic you need to learn that in life there's growth you need to have a chain a plan you have to say i want to metamorph i want to grow from being a writer to an editor i want to grow from being a presenter to a producer um, and then you can give caps okay, i want to be on tv i don't want to be on urban tv for five years you also have to check how old you are when you get into the game i've been doing media for about 16 years I'm not 50 something I'm still a very young guy it's all about you know ide identifying your passion and, and find a way to turn that passion into your profession so the key is to say you know what I've done I've been a presenter doing urban TV stuff for 10 years now um, I really love making shows so half of the time while I was presenting I was doing the extra work by creating the shows and producing the shows now most of what I do is I produce a lot of the shows that you watch but you just don't know about it because that works for me personally, because I like to actually do the work, and I want to sit back in my career and say, wow, think about you know, the top 10 brands in the world, and I've, I've worked on eight out of those 10. I'm satisfied, you know? And I'm looking at the point whereby a lot of the stuff I'm working on is, is kid content. I've done a lot of youth content for such a long time, I need to focus on the next generation. Who's gonna be the next Ill Rhymes? You know, I'm not gonna be looking at somebody who's close to my age to be Have the next Have you found Ill the next Ill Rhymes? Ill Rhymes? I'm still looking, okay. but we're gonna get there. It's, it's the, um, there's now a demand because of different platforms. A lot of people are producing content straight to YouTube, straight to Instagram, and it's easier now. You know, back in the day, it was too expensive. Nobody's mm -hmm. ready to invest in terrestrial TV. Um, we're here right now, we're online. You get me, so many people have access to it. It wasn't that way before. You know, so going back to the growth, um, it's simple. You know, personally, you need to look and say, where do I want to be in 20 years? I have a media company that produces shows. I'm doing that because I've realized that I can't go on presenting urban shows for the next 10 years. The next phase of my life, I can say, you know what, I would want to work for CNN. I want to work for BBC. You know, I want to put myself on that level, or I want to be a documentary presenter. 
Do you get me? You need to, you need to think ahead. I feel like somebody's speaking out of my head. But, you know, we'll come <laughs> back and we'll still have this conversation with Il Rhymes. We'll go on a very quick break. When we come back, he'll still be in the studio and the conversation continues in a moment. This is my question for you. What's your backup plan when you leave the scene? Because from what you're saying, you already yeah. have a plan in place. What exactly would you be doing even while discovering the new EO rhymes, yeah. even while you know managing that company you said you've started yes. and working with the other brand? What would you be doing when you leave the scene totally? Okay, so um, I'm pretty much always going to be in the scene. I was going to say that <laughs> if you ever do leave at all. Um, but I, it will be a lot more of production. Like it'll be a lot, like if you, my aim in, in the media space is if you see a show and you're like, this is awesome, it'll be produced by Ill Rhymes. That, that is the, the long-term goal for that. Um, but I also have other interests, like I'm into the hospitality business okay. as well. Um, I've got a noodle bar that's doing really good. So what I like to do is take something that seems very ordinary and put a different spin on it. I'm literally selling noodles that everybody eats. But what I've done is I'm packaging it differently. I'm using premium products on it. And I'm giving you what you want. Fast, easy, super delicious. And it's working. We're doing loads of events, ETC. Um, I'm also part of a new um, facility that's opening. Um, it's a restaurant, lounge. Um, now I see what you mean so by cool. you've got your hands full. So we understand why you can't really be as active as social media. Yeah. But you should get a social media manager just in case. Yeah, but you know, with these things, you still, you still need to be personal. Like, sure. the way I like to tie it in is I do something called Santa Illy. So every December, um, I do a 12 days of giveaways. So what I do is I call on, like, sponsors who are, like, client friends who I've worked with throughout the year, and I say, um, so we started the first year, we only, only touched 50 lives. The second year, we did 300 lives. This year, I'm, I'm a bit heartbroken because I haven't had enough time and the economy has been really really you know has I'm gone, sure I'm yeah. sure many people can totally agree oh, with you, on you the know economy. so I feel bad now because by now I usually already have a plan that you commercials will already be rolling right now we legit don't even have sponsors yet so I'm thinking to say I know it hasn't been a great year for everybody but I still need to do something at the beginning of this year I was like you know what we're gonna give out a car this year you know it looks like I might not be able to do that but I'm sure like some, of, some of my media friends are they're, they're watching right now. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna come together. So if you want to partner with Il Rhymes, you want to sponsor him, please hit him up on his social media yes. platforms, which will be scrolling down um, on your TV screens as well. Il, you look too fresh. You look too good mm. that I don't think you've seen hard life at all. I have. So exactly, I want to see. That? Give us a, an insight into some of the challenges you've been yeah, through and see, how you've been able to tackle them. I'm grateful to God, you know, for um, him giving me the grace to be really focused. So a lot of people don't understand, like I was in uni and working um, at the same time. Like I was working before I went to uni. I went to University of Lagos. Um, then I was at my, what would I say? I was extremely popular, I would say, because then I was on Sound City. Sound City was new, it was fresh. I was on tour all the time. I was in different countries. I was hanging out with the biggest celebrities. Every international celebrity that touched Nigeria, I was the guy who was having the one-on-one -on -one interviews with them. You know, so but I was still in uni. I was still doing my exams. I was still reading my books. Um, it's about you know, it's about focus. It it is tough. Do you know that when I first went to uni, like I had a lecturer that sent me to buy him Eba. And you actually did that. And I went and bought him Eba with like one hundred meat, just to, be, <laughs> just to be like, yo, what's up? You know, I, I've I realized in life that a lot of people just have a different perception of you. You can try and be a genuinely humble, calm guy, but because you're quiet, a lot of people don't understand you, and they just think, oh, this guy must be arrogant, or who does he think he is, you know, because he's popular. That's not it, you know. There's, there's different challenges. I'm not going to, you know, apologize for being, being fresh or being popular. I'm grateful to God. God has blessed me. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to make the best of what I want to be. Like, I, I'm, I'm looking at my international counterparts. I'm looking at what they've achieved in their lives. I'm looking at how they've impacted their society. And I can see that I'm still very, 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 very way behind. You know, so everybody has their challenge. To me, that's the challenge that I'm looking at, is to say, how can I say I am a media mogul when I don't have the capital to change 10 lives? Do you get where I'm coming from? Like, a lot of people just do the talk, but we actually don't care about other people. We, how many lives have 
are the so-called people changed, and you want to blame the leaders. Now imagine these are people who have gone through so many years, you know, misappropriating public funds. They have good lives, but people around them are suffering. So if you are a quote-unquote an entertainer, and you've made money off people going to your shows or downloading your music, etc., and you can't take time out to help those same people, how different are you from the leaders? Very, very, very well said. important. Mm -hmm. I think that's food for thought. We should all think of yeah. how to give back. In your own words, what would you say would be your words of advice to people who are looking to go into media? Because we're seeing a lot of them coming yes, up these yes. days, young people. I'm sure you get loads of DMs, people saying, I want you to mentor me, I want you to be, I want to be your intern. Yeah. So off the top of your head, what are some of the tips you would give to these young ones? Um, first thing is, you, you um, guys, you, you need to be ready. A lot of people think... The media industry is super easy. They see the flashy cars, they see the so-called money, the you know big watches, the champagne. Half of that isn't real, guys. Okay, so you, you need to have a core purpose. You need to say, I really want to do this because I love. For instance, I tell people I talk for a living. That's predominantly what I do. E either I'm selling you a show, or I'm hosting a show, or I'm presenting a show. I'm talking and I'm getting paid, right? So that is my source of livelihood. So for most people out there, my major thing is you need to really go into something because you love it. You have to identify your passion, and then you can actively turn your passion into your profession. And then you, you can do it for 20 years, man. I have a last question. Tell me. Are you single? <gasps> married? In a relationship? <laughs> do you have a lady? Wow. Do you have somebody right. interested in? No comment. Wow. <laughs> what? That's no a, comment. Yeah, no comment. Somebody, okay, <laughs> no comment. I, I want to say something, but I'll say no comment as well. But thank you so much for joining us, Il Rhymes. Thank you so We've much. We've had Il Rhymes, writer, TV presenter, TV producer, event host, and an all-round entertainer joining us here on Hello Nigeria to share his journey and to inspire people as well. This is to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.